Hi, you're huge, but you're not glowing. Are you a god? That's a rather unusual greeting. Hello to you as well. I must have forgotten my manners. Hello, huge visitor. Try not to trip on anything. It must be hard to keep your balance when you're so far from the ground. I'm not so huge. You're just small. Ask anyone. I'm tall for my height. You're just a giant. A god? Of sorts, perhaps. Why would I be glowing? All gods glow. At least everyone I've seen glows. How can you be a god if you're not glowing? You've seen gods around? Do they call themselves Sartan by chance? Hmm. No. They just call themselves gods. Maybe you're thinking about some other gods. How many gods have you seen? About this many. I think that there are more, but I don't get to see them. Well, if you were a god, you'd know that we don't necessarily glow all the time. The gods claim that they are gods because they glow. Anyone who doesn't glow can claim to be a god. You're big, but I don't think you're a god. Ah, you've caught me. I'm not really a god, I'm just a traveler. A traveler? Nice to meet you. I'm Jar. You're awfully big not to be a god, but you don't act like one. They're always yelling and commanding and taking things. Gods aren't very nice. Look what they did to my electric zinger panel. Electric zinger? What's that? The zingers are set up on the poles outside of the cave. When the lightning hits them, they suck up the electricity. I think the Kixi Winsy likes electricity or something. After the zingers have sucked up all they can hold, I pull these levers. Then the show starts. Show? What show? The zingers go crazy. They start spinning around and shooting sparks everywhere. Most of the electricity gets sucked into the kixi winsy though through the poles. Then my meters go back down and I wait all over again. The kixi winsy? What's that? Why, it's the machine. How can you not know about the Kixi Winsy? It's everywhere. It digs our homes out from the earth. It makes water for us to drink and does, well, other things too. It's our responsibility to care for it so it can care for us as well. You mean that's all you do? Sit here and pull levers? It's not that easy. You have to know the very best time to pull the levers. My family has been pulling these levers for years, and I'm the best lever puller there's been in a long time. This is all very interesting, but can you tell me more about these gods? Well, they only showed up about a hundred years ago. They dropped from the air in a flying ship. We were curious, of course, and were prepared to greet them as friends. But a glowing figure emerged and declared itself our god. At least one of many. None of us glow, and no one had ever claimed to be a god before, so we believed it. Now they've moved in and taken control. Personally, I liked life without all this divine intervention. When it arrived, your glowing figure claimed to be a god, and you bought it? Why would someone lie about that? I wouldn't claim to be a god if I wasn't. Besides, he glowed. The way they explain it, you can't glow if you're not a god. If the figure didn't glow, would you have believed it? Probably not. If they looked like you, I would have just thought that they were big, but not gods. A few extra feet of height doesn't make you divine. 
How exactly have these gods taken control? They moved into the Kixi Winsy control room and kicked everyone else out. They're always doing tests and things to it. I don't like them tinkering with the Kixie Winsy as if they didn't know how to work it. I mean, if you're a god, aren't you supposed to know all that stuff? Anyway, they've also kept us away from the north exit. That's where their ship is. They've always got a guard there to make sure, like they don't trust us. Hmm. If you're so upset with the gods, why don't you just drive them off? They're gods. You don't just tell gods to go away if they get inconvenient. I might not like them, but they're ours. If they weren't gods, though, you can bet we'd have gotten rid of them long ago. Nice place you've got here. Thank you. I share it with Limbeck. <gasps> he'll want to meet you. I'm sure he'll be delighted to see a visitor. We've never had one before. Does that mean you're attached? Well, yes. Someone's got to look after my Limbeck. He'd fall apart without me. You must really like this Limbeck. I'm glad that I can take care of him. He's such a gump sometimes. He gets so involved in his work that he even forgets to eat. I have to bring him in his food. That's why I keep the bread and marmalade handy. It's his favorite. Isn't that kind of a limited diet? Well, it's what he likes, and I have to make it perfectly. If there isn't enough marmalade, he calls it dry. If there's too much, he's so messy that he gets it everywhere. That's why I can't let him make it himself. He always puts far too much on. Does he like these gods as much as you do? He doesn't quite dislike them. He simply doesn't believe in them. He thinks that these gods have been taking advantage of us. We've been serving them when we were meant to serve the Kixie Winsy. He says that we've been oppressed. What does he do that keeps him so busy? Mostly he writes speeches. They're supposed to enlighten the masses. He keeps telling people that the gods aren't gods, that he's seen the gods when they weren't glowing. Most dwarves don't believe him. Even I have a hard time, but I support him. He's my Limbeck, after all. Can we talk about something else? All right. Nice place you've got here. Thank you. I Limbeck. I take it that he's another dwarf? Of course he's a dwarf. What else would I be sharing my quarters with? Is that his shirt hanging on the wall? Yes. He never picks up after himself. I made that hook specifically so he'd keep his clothes off of the floor. But I still have to do it for him. This room doesn't look big enough for two. Maybe not two creatures as big as you. I'll have you know that this is one of the most spacious rooms on Dreblin. We're lucky to have it. Let's back up a second. All right. I've enjoyed talking with you, but I'd like to explore this kixy winsy thing. Oh, certainly. Say hello to Limbeck if you get a chance. He's just in the next room. My word, what are you? I'm Haplo. What are you? Haplo? Oh, that's your name. Forgive me, I forget my manners sometimes. I am Limbeck Bolt Tightener. Welcome to my home. Y you're not a god? No, you can't be. You're not glowing. I assume you're a traveler. A traveler from where? 
Where are you going? Do you know the gods? What do you think of the Kixie Winzy? I'm just visiting. I've never been here before. I don't know the gods or anything about the Kixie Winzy. I'm very sorry. Sometimes my curiosity gets the better of me. I'll try and be patient. Please go ahead, ask me anything. Ever heard of the Sartan? The Sartan? Is that a place? I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. I'm looking for a piece of something. It's metal, hexagonal, and has a symbol on it. It's very old. Do you know where I might find it? Hmm. I wish I could help, but I'm afraid I'm not familiar with anything like that. If it is very old, there's only one dwarf that might be able to tell you something. Old Gropple Rock Digger has been here forever. Gropple Rock Digger? Do you think he'd help me find it? Old Gropple isn't very helpful in the best of moods. And lately, the section of the Kixie Winzy that he is responsible for has broken down. It's made him extremely sullen. He won't talk to anyone except in insults. Where can I find this rock digger? Gropple sits in the same place every day, waiting for the Kixie Winzy to be repaired. Each day he sits there, he gets more and more surly. Go north to the intersection and follow the left wall. That will take you to him. How old is Gropple Rock Digger? He's been here for as long as anyone remembers, long before I was born. He'll tell you he remembers when the Kixie Winzy was built, but that was thousands of years ago. I think what he forgets, he makes up. Do you think he could be persuaded to help me anyway? I don't think so. We tend to be a fairly stubborn people and grapple much more than most. If he doesn't want to be moved, he won't move. If he won't talk to you, no amount of persuasion will help. If I told him I was a god, would he help me out? Gropple hates the gods more than anyone. He remembers the days before the gods, when we worshipped the mangers. He feels that the gods displaced them. I think if you told him you were a god, he would die before he uttered one word to steer you in the right direction. What's being done to fix the Kixie Winzy? Normally, the Kixie Winzy automatically fixes itself. But when something breaks that isn't vital or necessary, it leaves the section unrepaired. We don't know how to fix it, and Gropple refuses to leave it. He's been sitting there for weeks. Enough about this rock digger. Tell me more about this place. Certainly. What do you want to know? What are you writing? Speeches. I have to convince my fellow dwarves that these gods aren't what they claim. They've oppressed us for too long. We must break the chains and take back our freedom. <sighs> I'm just not very literate. I can't put my ideas down on paper very well. But I'm determined. Why don't you ad-lib your speeches? Oh, I couldn't do that. Every idea must be perfectly worded. One misspoken word could have the opposite effect of what I'm trying to achieve. I only deliver my speeches after I'm entirely happy with them. Why don't your people believe you? I think I'm getting to them. No one is happy with the gods, but it's a different matter convincing them that the gods aren't divine at all. How are they oppressing you? They moved in, told us where to work and for how long. Our heritage tells us to care for the Kixie Winzy. Since the gods came, we haven't been able to do that. They make us use the Kixie Winzy to produce water for them. Parts of the great machine are breaking down, but unless the part has something to do with water production, we're not even allowed to look at the problem. They tell us where to live, they've broken up families, they keep us from the sacred places like the control room. If they were gods, I would assume that they had their reasons, but they aren't. They are just another race taking advantage of us. Where'd you get all of these parchments? I gathered them from all over the Kixie Winzy. No one reads them. In fact, no one can. They're too old. So I write my speeches on the back of them. What makes you so sure that the gods aren't what they claim? I've seen them. Without the glow. I discovered that it's artificially produced. 
It's not natural, eh? How do they make it? It's magic. According to some of the older dwarves, everyone used to be able to use magic. They've cast a spell to make themselves glow. How did you learn this? When the gods arrived, they dropped from the sky in a flying ship. After they moved in, I snuck aboard the ship. I actually saw one of them, not shining at all. He was moving his hands in some intricate motion over a bunch of little statues. When he was done, the statues glowed brighter. I must have gasped, because he immediately looked over at me. I ran, and he never found me. But ever since, they've posted a guard outside the ship. A flying ship? Yes. One of the byproducts of the Kixie Winzy is water. For their own reasons, they pump the water into the ship and leave with it, only to return a few days later with new gods and an empty ship. They're guarding the ship now. Hmm. Ever since my excursion, they placed one guard outside of their ship. Because dwarves tend to be fairly noisy, even when we're sneaking around, the gods put someone there who has very sensitive hearing. His ears can detect the slightest sound of movement out of the caves toward the ship. Consequently, no one's gotten anywhere near it. Isn't that enough to convince the other dwarves that they aren't gods? I haven't told them. It might go against their beliefs to the extent that they would just stop listening to me. I simply can't risk it. The only way to convince them would be by removing the gods' glow. Once my fellows have seen beyond the artificial shining, they will rise up and cast them out. Hmm. I can't figure out how to do that, though. Let's talk about something else. Very well. Let's get back to talking about this place, shall we? Certainly. What do you want to know? What is this place? This is one of the sacred places of the Kixie Winzy. The Broom Closet. I'm lucky enough to have this place to work. What exactly is the Kixie Winzy? The Kixie Winzy is everywhere. It's all around us. The humming you hear is the Kixie Winzy at work. How big is this machine? Larger than anything. No matter where you go, the Kixie Winzy has been there first. It digs tunnels and fills them in according to its own whims. We live in the chambers that it builds. If it fills up our homes, we find somewhere new to stay. Its controls and instruments are scattered throughout the entire continent. What does it do? It serves the purpose of the managers. Long ago, the managers built the Kixie Winzy and asked us to care for it. We have done so ever since. These managers, are they still around? No. The managers have been gone for many, many years. Some of the young ones don't even believe in them anymore. Only stories and legends keep the memory of the managers alive. In other words, you have no idea what the Kixie Winzy does. Well, no. It isn't for us to know. Our purpose is to monitor and care for the Kixie Winzy. The gods don't seem to know what it does either. Ever since they moved in, they've been running tests of all sorts on it. They've restricted everyone from the control room where they've based their tests. Let's talk about something else. Certainly. What do you want to know? What is that you're using for a candlestick holder? It's all I could find. If I had a better candlestick holder, you can bet that I'd be using it. That's a mighty big jug of ink you've got there. I found that jug of fast-drying ink quite a while ago. Despite the amount of speeches I write, I've only used a small portion of the ink the jug contains. I believe it will last indefinitely. That's all. I have to go. Very well. I must get back to my speeches. Feel free to look around. Please don't disturb my filing system. I just got everything where I wanted it.
What the heck do you want, you overgrown, dim-witted god wannabe? And speak up! Are you Grapple Rock Digger? No, my name's not Grupal Potlicker, you rockhead. I'm Grapple Rock Digger. Who's asking? My name is Haplo. Flappo? Interesting name. I wouldn't want to be saddled with it, though. Even Flappo is a better name than Grapple Rock Digger. Then it's a good thing my name isn't Apple Snotfinger. Sheesh. That's what I said, Grapple Rock Digger. Can't you hear very well? What did you say? Speak up. I can't hear very well. I said your name was Grapple Rock Digger. I know my name is Grapple Rock Digger, Dirt Rag. I told you that. Never mind. Let's not worry about names. Fine. You brought it up. Why are you sitting beneath that dripping black gunk? I'm not moving until the Kixie Winsy is fixed, and that's final. If dripping gunk isn't going to make me move, you sure aren't. Nice stool. There's no pool around here. What are you, blind? No, I said stool. What are you, deaf? Can't understand a word you said. New to the language, are you? Could I ask you a few questions? Listen, I'm sitting under a broken pipe that's dripping black goo on my head, and the gods have commanded everyone to stay away so they can't fix the problem, and you want me to be friendly? Answer all your questions with a smile? Well, I'll tell you what, until the Kixie Winsy is fixed and those gods are gone, I'm not talking to anyone. No stories, no questions, nothing. You won't talk to me until the gods are gone? Isn't that an awful lot to ask? Who's asking you? As far as I'm concerned, you can bump your head on every tunnel ceiling you find until you realize that I'm not going to talk to you. What's wrong with the Kixie Winsy? A length of pipe has rotted away. I had to shut the main valve to keep it from spewing black gunk all over the place. So until the pipes are repaired, I can't risk reopening the valve. Why don't you fix the pipes? It's not my job to fix it. Even if it was, I'd need something to fix it with. What about that box labeled pipe repair on the floor? Everybody's rummaged in that box taking what they want without regard for the fact that the Kixie Winsy might actually need it. At one time, there were five pipe fittings in the box. Now there's only one. What became of the missing pipe fittings? Who knows? Some folks have absolutely no consideration. They took my pipe fittings for one silly purpose or another. Did they ask my permission? Not once! Why, the gods even made off with one of them! Even if I could get those other pieces back, I'll never see that one again! Wait a second. What exactly are you holding in your ear? It helps me hear. It's... it's... a pipe fitting. I guess I got it from the box. Tell you what, if I repair your pipe, will you tell me what I need to know? Why not? 
fix my pipes and I'll answer your questions afterwards. As long as the guards are gone as well. I don't think very well with all of these walking lamps about. I don't think the pipe helps your hearing all that much. Can I have it? Very well, as long as I have your word that you'll use it to repair my pipes. Will there be anything else? Let's start over. We seem to have gotten off on the wrong foot. Have you looked at your overgrown feet lately? Wrong feet are all you have! I'm looking for a seal piece. A hexagonal metal artifact with a symbol etched into it. Maybe you could tell me where I could find it. I may have seen something like that. Doesn't matter, though. You obviously want to see it for yourself, and that's impossible. As I recall, there used to be a tunnel that led where you want to go, but the Kixi Winsy filled it up a long time ago. There's no way to get there anymore. If the Kixi Winsy filled in the tunnel, couldn't it just as easily dig another? <laughs> and how are you going to convince the Kixi Winsy to dig where you want it to go? The gods have been trying to control it for years, and they've gotten nowhere. Besides, I'm not going to tell you where it is until my pipes are repaired. Fact is, I've said too much already. Why are you so grumpy? Wait a second, that's a question! If you're trying to trick me, it won't work. I'm not saying anything! Maybe changing the subject would make you happier. Not likely! I don't want anything, you squat, ugly old dwarf. Then why are you wasting my time? Get out of here, you festering pile of refuse! Five more minutes. Not quite enough marmalade on this one. <laughs> 
drat. Now I'll have to start over. Who are you? Are you a slave? I don't recognize you and you aren't chained. I certainly hope you aren't an elf sympathizer. First things first, who are you? I suppose I have little choice. I have to trust you. I've been here too long and hope is wearing thin. My name is Andrews. I'm King Stephen's cousin. A duke. Why are you here? It's a long story. I was leading my people against the elven forces on one of the smaller volcanoes. We were greatly overmatched, and they defeated us easily. They killed most of my army and took the rest as slaves, including myself. Luckily, they didn't recognize me as the king's cousin. I would be more valuable as a hostage for ransom than as a slave. Why haven't you been rescued before now? When elves capture humans, they divide them into small groups aboard their fleet of flying ships. That way, rebellions are manageable and usually non-existent. Aboard these ships, slaves are impossible to track. Even if there was a plan to rescue us, they'd never be able to single out this particular frigate. If King Stephen knew you were here, could he rescue you? It's possible, I suppose. If you can get to my cousin and tell him that I'm being held prisoner here on Drevlin, he would do everything in his power to rescue me. You'll need something to convince him, though. Go to Yolandia, the fourth island. Give this to the king. The ring should be enough to convince him to believe you. Who are these other people? Members of my army. Now, like myself, slaves to the elves. 
Although the ship is powered mostly by magic, it requires manpower to steer it. Following the elves' commands, we manipulate the ropes you see here, which change the attitude of the wings. That's what we do. That's all we do. What's the story behind these gods? Drevlin is important because the Kixi Winzy, as these dwarves call it, pumps out water as a byproduct to whatever else it does. Water is scarce throughout the realms. In order to control this water source, the elves have convinced these gullible dwarves that they are gods. Their claim is based on a simple glow spell dreamed up by the ship's wizard. The crew is fairly small, only about four or five elves, but they are spread thin throughout the caverns. In order to maintain the spell, the wizard has created miniature statues that he uses as substitutes. He keeps them all aboard the ship in one place. As long as the glow spell lasts on the statues, no matter where the elves are, they continue to glow and the dwarves continue to believe that the elves are gods. That's all. Thanks for the information. As you wish. But I can only hope that you will return to aid us. What is a human doing loose? In my quarters, I'll have to take care of you quickly. Hello again. How can I help you? That's all. I have to go. Very well. I must get back to my speeches. Feel free to look around. Hello again. I've enjoyed talking. Oh, sir. those? You have to have four years of training before you can even think about pulling a lever. 